sales of, of die cast scale models has grown significantly, probably the highest it's ever been. Even during these inflationary and war times, these models are selling out. This is a Ventator SVJ, they had two runs of it and they're sold out. They sold out less than a month when they rolled these out. So there's still buyers out there. These models are, are selling. So AutoArt's not going to just re dramatically reduce their prices. They don't have a good reason to. The other alternative is, well, find another die cast company because there are companies out there that are um, pricing their models significantly lower. Some of them do have opening parts and they're just playing more affordable. The problem is, is they don't have the same subject matter. The other factor to take in consideration is the licensing. There's a reason why AutoArt does not have any BMWs in their line right now. It has a lot to do with, you have to pay BMW significant money to produce a model of their cars. So think about all the different companies that AutoArt has in their portfolio now. You know, they have, they have GM, they have Lamborghini, um, Aston Martin, and you get what I'm going with this. They have to pay each of those companies a licensing fee. So that's significant and it may have gone up. So that could contribute to some of the reason. Um, but who knows? Bottom line is, is that these are not terrible models. Despite what some people have argued, they're not terrible models. They're very good models. Um, so let's talk about the positives and the negatives. So the positives with the, the, with the composite models are as follows. One, the sharp lines, the more accuracy to the real thing. There's no disputing that the accuracy has gone up when they've went to the composite material. Number two, the paint. At the beginning when AutoArt started with the composite models, the paint was terrible. It almost looked as if they were just using a dye into the ABS and mixing it in as, you know, yellow number three or something and producing it that way. In other words, the cars weren't actually painted. It was just molded um, ABS that had a pigment added to it. That's what it looked like. I don't know if that's actually what they did. But the earlier models, there was complaints about the paint looking dull and not having any depth to it. More recently, they've improved dramatically with their paints. Um, the uh, Ventator Liberty Walk I briefly showed you, the paint on that is just wonderful. The Ventator that I reviewed months ago, again, paint spectacular. So there's no denying that the paint product or however they got it to improve has improved dramatically so there's no argument there i'm giving the advantage to paint for the notorious paint rash that you get with die cast models it doesn't seem like the way that these are painted the feel of the paint that you're going to have that issue i've yet to get a composite die cast model that has a paint defect it may have another defect like the pieces being loose or something breaking off which attributes to it being so delicate but the paint itself it's zero issues, no paint rash. The previous auto arts, almost all of them, even the ones I would consider perfect, had some paint issue. Some of them not that significant, some of them pretty significant. So paint durability would definitely be a plus for the composite models. The other positive is the availability of models. Because this ABS material is cheaper, cheaper, it allows AutoArt to produce far more examples. So in the die cast world, back in the day when that was the prevailing material to use, AutoArt would have a mold for a particular car. You could use the SVJ, for example, and they produced a finite amount of them. Finite being that they understand that collectors do not want their models to be flooded into the market because collectors like having things on a limited basis and so if you take their signature line for example that signature line has a finite amount of models that they're going to produce if you understand what i mean just try looking up a zonda r um, nuremberg ring record pagani see the price on that and that pretty much will tell you 
what we mean and why collectors like the idea of having limited models. Well, because they're limited, they have an allowance. And what I mean by allowance, they still need to make money off these things. They make money by selling the, the inventory that they have, but they also make money by selling the mold to other companies. You ever notice how, if you look at a Maisto, for example, um, and they do have an inventor for the Maisto, and if you look closely and put it next to an auto arc, it's not a coincidence that they look almost identical, with the exception of all the interior parts, the motor, the seats, all of that is nowhere close to the detail of an auto art. Yes, so they do sell their molds. That is a fact. There's no disputing that. And so that's how they profit from their molds. The other thing you probably have noticed is, is that AutoArt will do reissues sometimes. They reissued the infamous uh, Mazda 93 um, Le Mans Winner. Um, and that is a beautiful model. And I was very thankful that they did reproduce those cars again because I didn't get it during the first run. And they were expensive as you know what. So they do reissues. Another example is this beauty right here. So that is the uh, Skyline. That's die cast metal. That was put out maybe three or four years ago. It, it allows them to go back to their archives or the collection of their molds and reproduce these models. So that is a huge plus when it comes to the um, use of die cast material. With composite, it's similar to resin material. Resin material that, that companies use, they can produce low volume limited models very quickly and not have to worry about um, economies of scale. So that's what we're really talking about when we say we need to get the most out of utilizing a specific mold to be profitable resin folks they don't have to do that so the bbrs and the mr companies out there they can produce limited of 10. in fact there are some companies out there that do that they will produce maybe 30 of a specific model limited edition they're priced as high as heck but again they have the ability to do that because the resin material all you need is a simple mold pour the form into the mold put it in an oven bam you're there you're done so for them is far less expensive than purchasing rolled steel material, melting it, putting it in a mold. It's more expensive in other words. The other thing when we talk about expenses, think about how much it costs to ship metal. Metal is heavy. The heavier it is, the more expensive it is. ABS, pick up an auto art model, is extremely light. Shipping costs is gonna cost less. So there is an advantage when it comes to producing, well not producing, but using the deposit material, which goes back to why is it costing us more? Who knows? Um, some of the negatives, the weight. Yes, it has a ballast in there that makes it feel heavier, but I'm referring to the weight of the opening parts, the doors, the trunk, the hood, they're very flimsy and delicate. Thank goodness I haven't broken any of these yet, but I feel uncomfortable opening the door, especially on Aventators and Kona's eggs because of their intricate opening apparatus that they use. But that definitely is a negative. The other negative is the cost, but I can't figure out why, with the exception of the wars and the COVID things going on, why these are priced the way they are. It just doesn't make sense. I appreciate you watching. Please leave comments and please like and subscribe. That'll give me an idea if you like seeing these videos and I'll produce more. I appreciate your time and thank you very much. See you next time.